friendship for me to make my heart open up again and say, you know what? <laughs> I, I think I am open to this again. Mm -hmm. Even though I said, I'm good, I'm <laughs> yeah. good. And if we're honest, bro, right? Like we say that because of the pain mm -hmm. in the moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we're really, we're really pledging an allegiance to, I don't ever want to go through this again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our thoughts to say, will just kill marriage altogether. And that's not actually the answer. You know, when it comes to how do we ensure that our second marriages aren't failing at such a high rate, we got to deal with ourselves, bro. We got to deal with ourselves. And I think going into my second marriage, that was, that was highest on my list for me personally. Literally, bro, that was the highest thing on my list personally. It wasn't, oh, I'm gonna get into a second marriage and this one's gonna be better than the first. Like, no, no, no. It was it was a sobering thought, bro. Yeah, I was listening to uh, Pastor Andy Stanley not too long ago and he was talking mm. about second marriages. And he said, it's almost like carrying this garbage bag with you down to the altar. Like, can somebody take this? And, and please, can somebody hold this for me? Because it's heavy. Oh, oh, you going to hold this bag for me? You know, and I said, man, that, yeah, bro, I, I never get rid of that. Image. I'm like, think about how many people do that. Who's going to carry on. this trash for me? Come on. Come on. Come on. Leave, leave, leave the trash at the door. And here's the catch to that, Sean. I might not carry a trash bag down to my altar especially if I've done good work on myself. But if we're honest, bro, there's so much stuff in us. We don't even know. We, we don't even know. Like the right, like we, I haven't lived the next 10 years of my life. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, wanting you to love fearlessly I have a special guest with me today. He is a great friend of mine. I'm an entrepreneur. The man has worn so many hats. You can find out more about him in the description below. I'm going to have him all linked up in the description because I want to get into today's topic. We are going to discuss how to find real love after divorce with my man, Dwayne Hawkins. How are you doing this evening, sir? Great, bro. Great, man. It's glad to. I'm glad to be back on here again with you. Uh, I had fun. Literally, I had fun the first time that uh, we was able to be on here together, man. And honestly, I didn't feel like we had enough time, but so I'm just glad that we we on here again. Definitely. Yeah, man, for sure. Because I have to get you back on the show. We had some discussions off air about uh, this man series, but. I'm not going to get the people too excited about that because I know as soon as I start, they're going to be asking me for it. And I'm like, I, the man got a life. OK, Let me... <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely hook up and we'll make that happen again. But today's topic, man, how to find real love after divorce, man. Uh, we, you know, we both taken that trip, uh, you know, going through that process. How would you define, in, in Dwayne's terms, how would you define real love? It's legit, real love. I mean, especially when you when you said that, that, that question, actually, and I didn't even know you were going to ask that question. That question came to my mind, man, because I think it's definitely a fundamental part of the question that you're asking. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I guess for me, when I think through real love, there's a few things that that, that I think through ultimately, man, I, I start with, you know, God mm -hmm. and, um, you know, obviously we know, uh, scripture to be true that, that God is love. And so like my example of love and what that expression looks like is ultimately going to be rooted in him. And so on a practical level, we're, we're talking about, you know, agape, unconditional love. We're mm -hmm. talking about friendship love. We're talking about Eros, romantic love, right? Like there are, I think love is so nuanced, it it can cover um, a multiplicity of bases. And so the realness of it though is, is gonna be rooted in God because he's the one that orchestrates it. Um, but I think when you take that, that notion of real love, 
and you start to put that into the context of relationships, mm -hmm. you know, then it just leads to this idea of the attributes of love. Can I find that? Is that present in the relationships that I have? Right. So is that present with my parents? Is that present in the relationship with a friend? Is that present in the relationship with my wife, my husband, so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I would wrap my mind around real love. That's a good one, man. Because usually, you know, people, we, we throw around the word love so much. Oh, I love cheeseburgers. I love French fries, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, right. But when you put it in that context, you know, like you said, that agape love, that phileo, that, that eros, those different levels of love, man, it really helps categorize things because of the way we use it in today's culture is so, you know, I love Jordans. It's just like, yeah, Jordans come and go, you know? So. Right, right, right. Do you love them unconditionally though, right? Mm. And look, needless to say, some some people might, some people <laughs> might, right? But I think they got to sell them. I mean, come on, come on. And then I guess it wasn't too unconditional, was it? <laughs> Are you a content creator? YouTuber, maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> um. <laughs> how can someone uh find that love after divorce i mean how did you know you wanted to try this love thing again yeah divorce what was that like for you yeah i think the last time we 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 talked man um in the last episode that we had talked through man i i remember i remember i mentioned saying that when I first went through my divorce, man, the onset of it, bro, I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm not, I'm not marrying again. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. And really, man, I think, I think for me, it, it started with, with the grieving. Mm -hmm. um, and then it worked its way through healing and, and then it worked its way through rehab. And I think one of the things we fail to realize is that in a divorce, and and if I could pull a page out of my mom, Rachel Hawkins' book, you know, she said divorce is so um, detrimental because it's it's a tearing, right? Like it's literally a rending. Just think of one piece of fabric that is niched and deeply stitched together, right? And there's this literally, you literally have to like use so much energy and force to just tear it apart. And I think that happens to us emotionally in our hearts, right? And mm -hmm. so I don't even think the ability to, in two ways, to love and be loved mm -hmm. by another person, we can't even begin to lean into that until we allow our own hearts to really heal. Um, because once the heart can heal, now the heart is getting back to a place of full healthiness where now it has the emotional capacity, right? Mm -hmm. To even start leaning into the place of love. And so I think for me, man, the the healing part, the grief, the heal, the rehab. And but through that, through the, along those lines, man, for me, particularly out of the divorce, it was the phileo love 
of a friend that really started to open me up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was the phileo love of a friend that really started to open me up. Mm-hmm. And I think that can be the danger for us coming out of divorce, um, especially if we're in a place of unhealthiness where we feel like we just can't live by ourselves. Mm-hmm. Or we don't want to be by ourselves. The idea of being alone um, is more terrifying than just allowing our emotions and our thoughts to go through the process of healing. Um, you know, so I just think with all of that, man, for me, that that phileo love of a friend opened, it softened my heart. Um, and that was really steeped again during that season of 2020, man, where the relationships for me were were minimized, mm-hmm. you know, they were they were narrowed down. And so that really allowed friendship for me to make my heart open up again and say, mm-hmm. you know what? <laughs> I, I think I am open to this again, mm-hmm. even though I said I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm good. And if we're honest, bro, right? Like we say that because of the pain mm-hmm. in the moment, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And we're really, we're really pledging an allegiance to, I don't ever want to go through this again. Mm-hmm. Sometimes our thoughts to say, we'll just kill marriage altogether. And that's not actually the answer. So mm, yeah, and that's that's so good. Two things I oh, you said so much. I wanted to kind of, uh, but I, I will say, <laughs> I will say this: feelings, right? Feelings mm. leading, and I wish I would have known that years ago, right? Even even before just going through a divorce, just learning how to manage my feelings and emotions, yeah. and to know that. It'd, it'd be gone in a day or shoot, maybe 10 minutes. You know, I'm just feeling this kind of way. And we make those permanent, we make permanent decisions based on temporary feelings. Yeah. 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 No, yeah, totally, man. I think, and I think that's the, that's the danger because we're just trying to get through the feeling rather than, and that's a massive part of the grief. Like the only way to, 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 to to overcome grief is is to not actually go over it under it or around it it's to go through it and a part of going through it a major part of going through it is exactly what you're saying just like just sit with that feeling don't be so quick to make like you said a permanent decision mm-hmm. based on a season that yeah it's started it's here today but give it time it it'll it'll subside it will pass mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. And I think so many people, one of the reasons I even started uh, doing the rebranding is to help people to love fearlessly, love again, mm. to not, it's like, it's not over. Now, if you choose not to do this again, that's cool. I get it. It's remarriage right. isn't for everybody. And we're going to talk about right. that as well. Right, right. But I think about what if I would have gave up on love, I would have missed out on the woman I'm married to now. Man, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Um, and, and and that even pushed me to grow and mature because she's a different woman that that's helping me push through stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. alone seasons are important. They are. I also do believe you can grow through relationships as well. Like totally. It's just that mirror, right? <laughs> totally. Totally. Yeah. 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 To, to your point on, on the alone season, I, I think if we if we hoard, and I want to use that term intentionally, mm-hmm. if we hoard the alone season, right, then then we're only choosing the alone season from a place of pain and not from a place of purpose. Right. Um, and I think if we can learn to choose the alone season from a place of purpose, whether marriage comes or not, at the end of the day, we inevitably become healthy. And I don't even know if we might get here in this conversation, bro, but Let's like go. coming out of the coming out of a divorce, you yourself need to be healthy just to um agape and phileo love again the people that you're connected to. And I think we fail to realize that that the pain of our divorce, we in some ways can easily project that mm. onto people that aren't even marriage candidates. It's it's a brother, it's a sister, it's a friend. It's a child. You know what I'm saying? And we can't even fully show up and love well in those relationships because we're still moving and operating out of the place of pain of the divorce 
rather than that place of purpose. So mm -hmm. that's good, man. What do you think, in your opinion, is the biggest misconception about love? What is it that people keep messing up with with this whole thing? Love. What is the biggest? You know, it, it, is it that love is inconsistent is is it i mean what what do you think is your misconception about love or the at least what do most people get wrong about it yeah i i'd say that it's it's supposed to be easy mm. right that it's supposed to be easy it shouldn't love shouldn't be this difficult right mm -hmm. um and i'd say like if it depends on how you're defining love, depends mm -hmm. on how the definition in which you're rooting love in, depending on who you're rooting love in, right? Mm -hmm. If love is just this, um, this concept of bliss and emotional feel good, then, then yeah, I, based on that definition, it's supposed to be easy. <laughs> but if I, if I rooted man in the one who is love mm -hmm. really didn't seem like that love for him was easy in his flesh, yeah. right? If we're talking about the person in the work of Jesus, yeah. I mean, he went through some stuff that was hard and difficult, but I am also reminded of it was the joy of what his love would produce, right? Mm -hmm. That gave him the strength and the gumption and the intestinal fortitude to endure the hardships that he went through. Now, I am in no way lobbying that any of us in earth right now are going through anything remotely close, right? Yeah. To what Jesus went through. However, though, I think for us, bro, the misconception if we can overcome that it's supposed to be easy and actually lean into the notion that if it's easy, is it even worth living for? You know what I'm saying? If it's if it's supposed to just be always smooth sailing, like, like where do we even get to live then? You know what I mean? Like, 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 is my wife even worth it if my concept of love is that this is just supposed to flow? It's just supposed to be easy. There's not supposed to be any sacrifice. There's not supposed to be any grit, any grind, right? Again, at the core of us, though, if we can have that joy. Mm -hmm. about what I know this love will produce, right? Yeah. Then the toughness of the journey actually doesn't become something to avoid, but it becomes something that both my wife and I can mutually together embrace. You know, mm -hmm. I have this, I have this saying that I always, I, I affirm my wife in this way, bro. I say, I tell her, I say, listen, um, we're going to have tension. We're going to have our, our arguments, right? We're gonna we're gonna have our moments where it feels like we're at odds with each other. But I tell her, I say, listen, I don't want to fight with anybody else but you. Mm. <laughs> like, like, right? Like, because mm. I'm I'm not I'm not in my second marriage uh, just because I'm looking for something easy. I tell mm. people all the time, if you're looking for something easy, then don't get married. <laughs> don't get married, and it's not even because. Marriage, quote unquote, is hard. Yeah. Not at all. And I think this is where we miss it for those of us that are working on our second marriage. It's not that the marriage is hard. It's just that, Dwayne, you got issues, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got issues that I got to work through, right, that I need to deal with. And and so if I can if I can have the right conception, right, mm -hmm. of of love that, no, it's fun. It's joyful. It is deeply rewarding, but one thing love is not, it's not easy. If I can have that right conception, bro, then what I'm saying is, is the undercurrent of how, how we engage the marriage. Mm. We're going to fight, but I love you in such a way that I want to fight with you. Mm. Right. That's the, yeah, because this yeah, marriage, marriage be, be hard. It'd be hard, you know. It's it's the it's the growth and maturity. It's the beauty of it, though that that comes from growing together. Man, you know, yeah, yeah. It's it's the beauty of it, man. And I, I think that's what I've learned over time. Because when we talk about love is easy and stuff like that, because it's it's almost like cliche, right? Like, 
love is, you know, like love. Mary J say, love is all we need, right? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll we'll buy into it. <laughs> but but the growth from it, man. And now that I'm a little more older and mature, I don't look at when my wife and I fall out as just something that's permanent. Right, right. It's like something is going to come out this. Whether if I need to be corrected or if she need to be corrected, it's like, yeah. no, let's let's be present. Because sometimes we, my wife and I will fall out. And we'll, nope, I need you to be present. Stay with me. Come on. Stay come with on. me. Come on. Come on. Let's fight through it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And it's like, oh, I'm comfortable, but you know what? Let's keep going. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you got one last thing on that, bro. Like, and, and I know you got context for this, man. Like, like if you just think about the way we are wired and have been created by God through and through, bro, like you're even if you want to get bigger or you want to get cut up or you want to lose weight or you want to get real, like, like to get, I love this analogy to, to build muscle, you first have to tear it. Right. Like to form it, to get it looking like cow, nice. You know what I'm saying? Summer body, like you, you gotta tear it. There's a there's a there's a portion of that where you have to break it down so that when it heals, it comes back stronger. And so I just like to believe, man, that the contentious, and this is what my wife and I call them, the contentious conversations that we have is actually the Lord breaking us down. He's forming us. You know what I'm saying? And I think if we can hold that perspective on those conversations, on those fallouts, the fights, the arguments, mm -hmm. when we go into them exactly like you said, bro, it's it doesn't mean that the marriage is on bad terms. It just means in this moment, on this day of the week, in this situation, um, we're having to work a little hard through this, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's okay. Why? Because I only want to do this with you, babe. <laughs> I don't want to do this with anybody else. I like that. That's good. That's good. Talking about second marriages, statistically, the divorce rate is 67% second time around. In your opinion, what can be done to lower these numbers? Like, what can we do to help second marriages become a little more successful? What, or what do you see are maybe some of the biggest hiccups going into second marriages that people really need to get under control? Like, what do you, where we need to fix this, 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 these numbers? Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I kind of alluded to this and well, the, the foundation of, of my response to this question is taken from the first episode that we talked through where you asked the question, um, who is the better spouse, right? <laughs> the one on their first marriage or the one on their second marriage. And my response to that, um, really wasn't either of them. My response to that was right. The one who is humble, the one who allows that season and the situation to be what it needs to be in and of itself. And, and thirdly, it's the one who makes room and space for the other person, the other spouse in that relationship, right? To learn and grow and become their fullest and healthiest self. Um, and so that's kind of where that's, that's kind of the foundation for me. Um, you know, when it comes to how do we, ensure that our second marriages aren't failing at such a high rate. We got to deal with ourselves, bro. Mm -hmm. We got to deal with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think going into my second marriage, that was, that was highest on my list for me personally. Mm -hmm. Literally, bro, that was the highest thing on my list personally. It wasn't, oh, I'm going to get into a second marriage and this one's going to be better than the first. Like, no, no, no. It was... It was a sobering thought, bro, in a way that's healthy. And I'm using sobriety in a way that's healthy. Like, like if we understand, Dwayne, that at, fundamentally, bro, you have issues that you need to work through, you need to own, you need to deal with. And a second marriage isn't going to work those things out of you. It's not. And what we tend to do is we tend to look back on our first marriage and say, that person was 100% the issue. And so now my second marriage is going to be better, right? Because it's different than the first one. And I think that's the illusion. I think that's the illusion. Because then what we tend to do then is when we have that mindset that we're not the issue, we tend to bring first marriage expectations. Mm. 
into the second marriage. Because mm. we're not the issue, right? <laughs> so if I'm not the issue, I don't have to lay down my first marriage expectations, bro. I can just transfer those because my expectations in the first marriage wasn't the problem because I'm not the issue. Jeez. And I think that's, I think that's the, that's the trap. That's the trap. Even, even if, even if and this is, this is for whoever out there, mm -hmm. even if you have a very valid and strong argument that you were only at fault for the first marriage ending in divorce by 3%, hear what I'm saying, bro by 3%, you're still at fault at some level <laughs> because it only takes 3%, bro, of strychnine to kill a rat. <laughs> we talk about rat poison, okay? It only takes 3% of strychnine. The other 97% is cheese, potatoes, mm -hmm. vegetables, chicken, <laughs> meat, like, like, right? And so yeah. if you have a very valid and strong argument, I would encourage you like, then deal with your 3%, okay? Because guess what's following you into your second marriage? Your 3%. Mm, your 3%. Yeah. So I'd say, bro, let's, let's deal with ourselves before we enter into covenant with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Make sure that we're working on us. Make, it, make sure that we're controlling the things that we can control. We're healing in ways that only we can heal, right? And we're owning ourselves. Because I don't want to be... I didn't want to be the same Dwayne in my second marriage that I was in my first. Fault or no fault, doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like we're not talking about fault anyway when you're talking about oneness. Mm, that's true. We're talking about responsibility, mm. right? It's it's yeah. it's a mutual weight that that we commit to and we covenant together in that we're going to carry this together. And some days. You know, it's it's gonna, I'm gonna be feeling low and my energy's depleted, and I'm gonna need my wife to carry me. And other days, it's gonna be vice versa. She's gonna need me to carry me. So we're not talking about fault. Mm -hmm. We're talking about responsibility. Let me own, bro, myself out of my first marriage as I move into my second one. I believe, bro, like that's just the foundation mm -hmm. of being able to get that 67% down lower. Mm, yeah, that's just the beginning. That's yeah, that's a that's a whole conversation <laughs> within itself. <laughs> yeah, I was listening to uh Pastor Andy Stanley not too long ago, and he saw mm. second marriages, and he said it's almost like carrying this garbage bag with you down to the altar. Like, can somebody take this and, and please can somebody hold this for me? Because it's heavy. Oh, oh, you're gonna hold this bag for me? You know, and I said, Man, that yeah, bro, I, I can never get rid of that bro. image. I'm like Think about how many people do that. Who's going to carry on. this trash for me? Come on. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. leave, leave, leave the trash at the door. And here's the catch to that, Sean. Mm -hmm. I might not carry a trash bag down to my altar, mm -hmm. especially if I've done good work on myself. Mm -hmm. But if we're honest, bro, there's so much stuff in us. We don't even know. <laughs> we, we don't even know. Like the right, like we, I haven't lived the next 10 years of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, God forbid, we might lose a kid or God forbid, like I might get like super ill, super sick. And, and I have no idea, bro, certain levels of unhealthiness or gaps in my heart that is just lying dormant, waiting for the right situation to come up. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So I, if you can... Get rid of the trash bag, because truth be told, it's a lot more stuff in us, bro, that, like you said earlier, the marriage is going to bring up out of us, and we need to make sure that we have the emotional capacity, the best footing, and the right foundation to be able to deal with those things. You yeah. don't want to deal with those things on top of carrying that trash bag that you currently got from your previous down to the altar. Mm. Amen to that. I got one more question before we get out of here. What is your advice to someone who wants to love again after divorce? Mm, okay. All intuition. Here's the first thing that came to my mind. I mean, we've already talked about, right? Grieve, heal, mm -hmm. rehab, um, let the heart heal. Mm -hmm. uh, so all on top of that, I would say, and this is one of the things that I, I'm, I'm talking, we always talk to our kids about, find a, a friend. Find a friend. 
find a friend. And what I mean by find a friend, I mean, just open yourself up to being a healthy friend with someone of the opposite sex, right? So if you're a male, open yourself up to being having healthy female friendships. If you are a female, open yourself up to having healthy male friendships, you know? And I it, it's it's just really learning to do singleness the right way, right? Because if we're honest with ourselves, man, many of us probably didn't do singleness the right way going into our first marriage. Like, let's just talk about foundation. Yeah, the marriage in and of itself ended in divorce, right? But divorce is literally the explosion of a series of issues, right? Yes. That were just embraced along the way. Not post I do at the altar, mm -hmm. pre I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So I would say find a friend, man, and just allow your heart to love well um, as a friend to another friend. Mm -hmm. And then here's one more thing I would add to that. Mm -hmm. um, I got this uh, from rap artist Show Baraka. Uh, show. Right? Show, bro. You be spitting fire. Show. He, he, did a, uh, he did a marriage CD some years back. Super dope. Yep. And he had a bar, bro. Mm -hmm. He's, he had a bar about his wife. And I was like, ooh, <laughs> where was that when I was single? <laughs> he said, he said, he was talking about his wife. He said, I knew that you would love me well by the way that I saw you love your sisters. Mm. He didn't say, I knew that you would love me well by the way you loved me in our singleness. No. I knew that you would love me well by the way I saw you love the women around you. Mm. And that is a barometer, bro. Mm. That is a huge barometer that when you're looking for a friend, yeah. you want to get in proximity with them. How well do they love their brothers? How well do they love their sisters? How well do they love their family? How patient, how long suffering, how caring are they for others? Those that they're not in a lifetime covenant with. Because you know, if they're doing that, for people that they're not in a lifetime covenant with, <laughs> it's it's natural out of who they are, mm -hmm. right? Yep. They're loving their friends like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we get in covenant, it's going to be like, yo, what are we doing? That is beautiful, so, man. I love that's what that. I say. I, that's good. And one of the things that I always tell people I love about my wife when, when we were dating was I love the way. She could do, she did things for people who couldn't do nothing for her in return. Man, come on. She loved, she loved giving, you know, giving her 10th and, yep. and above and beyond. She, you know, yep. tithing, you know, yep. and, and people be tripping on that. But I'm like, no, that's, that's serious. Bro. That's a heart issue. Come on, come right? on. So I was like, she loved to tie, she loved to give, and she loved to help the homeless. And, yeah. she, don't, and she don't like to see babies starving. I was like, those three things that we have a tendency to overlook sometimes, those are key Man. components. And I thought the same thing that you thought. I was like, if we get married, those people, you they can't even do anything for you. Come on. So come on. That's good. Yeah. That's man. good. <sighs> yeah, we're gonna have to do I th this man series. I'm looking forward to doing with you. So I will be hitting you up pretty soon. You know, I feel like we got so much lost time. From the time, you know, <laughs> here and there, but uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. I'm gonna have everything linked up in the description. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Instagram, Dwayne and Wendy. Uh, I think it's DW underscore TDH tribe, mm -hmm. uh, TDH coaching.com. Um, you can get us up on there, and then actually, all of those other links is actually on our link, uh, our link tree. I think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Shout out to my wife, Wendy, bro. she be taking care of me, man. On the on the social media front. So when y'all see all of the stories and the videos and all of that stuff, bro, hey, she be pushing me, bro. She be pushing me. So yeah, Instagram, see us, check us out, hit us up on that, DM us. We'd love to talk with you, connect. That's what's up, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, because I seen something you had on threads about seven things your dad said or something. Oh, so fire. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. If y'all haven't seen that, I want y'all to check that. I'm going to link it up or something. I don't know, but I, I people need to see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
a lot more, bro. A lot more where that's coming from. So just... I bet. I'm looking forward to it. Man, well, thank you so much for your time, Dwayne. I appreciate uh, your transparency and everything that you're doing, that you've done for the community, that you've done for the world, the people that you've impacted. I know you've impacted my life yeah. as well. So I definitely take this as an honor. Make sure you connect with Dwayne people. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you are watching this via YouTube, if you are listening to the, listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Would love to hear from you. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Dwayne Hawkins. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video.